it's going to happen quickly. So we'll go right to the to the slides here today that we have prepared. And there, as you know, there will be questions, uh, opportunity for questions at the end. Is this, uh, let me check with our team. Are, are we ready to record? Yeah, I just started. I just okay. started. So you so can start. Next slide. Here's who is who are the members of our team are right here. Uh, I've already introduced myself and there's my email address. Uh, why don't we just go in the order of the slide? We'll go to Kevin next. You can say hello and what you're doing and even a little bit about what you're doing now as the <laughs> grant is ending. Sure. I'm Kevin Harrington and I've been the gear and EANS coordinator. That is basically all the non-public schools right through and recently have picked up uh, the homeless provision and also working uh, beside Karen, and things are going quite well. Good morning. I am Mai Shasha. I am the fiscal coordinator for ESER grant. So I um, I am uh, administering the uh, invoicing and the payment uh, related with all of these payment uh, invoices uh, along with uh, Didi and uh, Terry. So next, uh, Didi, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Good morning, I'm Deanna Roberge. Um, I'm one of the management analysts um, doing the invoicing for our ARP grant um, and a few others that we have at this point uh, trying to end things. Um, so that's what I do. I do the invoicing and keep things moving. And I'm Terry Beal and I'm the other invoice reviewer um, and I work very closely as does Didi and everybody on our team to ensure that the districts are getting the funding that they have been allocated and we move through the process to make sure everybody wins in this whole situation. Thanks everyone. And uh, as just as the management analyst uh, introduced themselves, I was remembering that uh, we're eager for these funds to be used and the commissioner's office is watching to see how these funds are going out to schools. And there was an impressive number of uh, invoices with uh, amounts attached to them that were invoiced just in the last week. So uh, we're really trying to move these along. But the purpose of today's meeting, uh, we're hoping that we get a chance to review some timelines and invoicing details with you. That's an, an ongoing message. And also some reminders about things to be mindful of as these grants come to an end. So uh, a priority notice went out uh, middle of August, I believe. I had one business manager tell me yesterday he didn't see it. And I know it goes to particular people who are uh, on the receiving end of these official notices or priority notices and the messages don't always trickle around into the, the people in your home district office who are actually doing the work with the grant. But we made the request that uh, changes be completed. You know, all those little revisions that you're asking for for ARP, that they be completed by August 30th, which was last Friday. And I know that not everyone got that message in time. And uh, indeed, in the last couple of days, I've been uh, permitting some folks to, to make some revisions. You, typically, at, at this stage, it's, it's minor budget revisions because you finally got the figures all figured out and you either budgeted more for a particular project or less and you just want to zero in on it and make the best use of your money. And we are permitting those little adjustments, but certainly no major overhauls to the ARP application at this time, unless there's very extenuating circumstances. And I know sometimes districts have had new people come on board uh, as employees in charge and those, you know, you can make your appeal to, to make a change. I'm going to uh, let in Kathy uh, Smedberg from, Harris Smedberg from Bangor. Good morning, Kathy. Um, and the reason we're doing this is, is we're you know asking for folks to please to have committed um, themselves to how they're going to use the ESSER funds by August 30th or you know let's say September 10th now um, is to give us time, give us all time to review and approve the projects and expenditures and to and for you all to obligate them in a timely and thoughtful manner. But if that if you are up against a hardship without those deadlines, you know drop me a line, give me a call, or send an email. 
Okay, so next we will um, talk about some uh, timelines and invoicing. So this is just from the uh, our ESA dashboard that um, our uh, all of our team uh, field members uh, see that. And as of like end of uh, July, we still have um, sixty two percent remaining in ARP funds, and uh, which is more than two hundred and twenty nine million in dollar amount. So what we would like you to request just get it going, invoice us and uh, you know our uh, team members are working very hard to get it through the process so that uh, you can submit the next invoice and we can wrap it up very quickly and smoothly. Because we know that our obligation time or the period will end on September 30th, 2024, and it won't change. So September 30th, 2024 is the date where when all the obligations has to be completed. And for invoicing, we can, you can invoice us till December, 2024, but we request you submit it as early as possible because December 30th is the date when our team has to review and approve that invoice. That is the last day we can approve your invoice. So if there is anything that we need to work with you guys, we need some time. So please allow that uh, time so that our reviewer can work with you and get the invoice through the process. So earlier is better, but December 30th, 2024 is the date where our team can last um, approve any any on, of the invoices. And it is just our, uh, I mean, we have shown these slides many times before, but just as a reminder, we would like go through that uh, this one again, because as far as the timeline goes for the invoices, it takes for our team, Federal Emergency Relief Program team, to review the invoice and get it approved. It takes seven to 10 business days, and then it goes to the Department of Administrative and Financial Services. They have their own review process, and it takes some time between seven to 25 days. And after that is approved, it takes seven to 10 business days to get the reimbursement check. So all together, if, if an approvable invoice is submitted, it will take 17 to 45 business days. I say approvable because if the invoice needs, re, you know, is reopened for any of those reasons, it, it will take definitely more than this timeline. So we would like to um, uh, point this out, like we have started beginning um, August of this year, no agenda work in invoicing hour. Uh, so th this is to support the invoicing and reimbursement process for all of our uh, business managers. And uh, we would like to say like, yeah, please join us anytime between 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on each uh, on Tuesdays each week. And it will go until October 1st, 2024. And uh, no appointment is needed to attend these sessions. However, you need to register uh, for those meetings. And Terry, would you please, um, uh, you know, paste the link to the uh, office hour? That will be great. And uh, yeah, so after you register, you will be connected to the office, um, you know, to the office hour. And our team member, you know two or more, I mean, there will be there, they will be there to support you with any of your reimbursement question. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about some friendly reminders. And there is a question in the chat, but are we gonna address those now? I'm going to go ahead, Terry, because you probably have an answer for it, right? What? I'm sorry, Karen. 
um, am I, I, you, I, I think you could do it now because I think okay. you're okay. speaking says, and I think we, you could answer it directly. Okay. If we do need to submit our application for small adjustments, how often are those reviewed and what is the general turnaround time? So okay. this is changing your actual application. I'm okay. assuming, Denise, that's your question. So Karen, I'm giving this one to you. Okay. Um, so going back to that first couple of slides where I said, well, we're hoping that not too many districts are going to be making those adjustments right now. Um, I'm trying to stay very much on top of them and, and they typically get returned in a, within three days at the most. More often it's two. And then you can submit invoices after that. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about disposition a little bit. Um, and disposition is the process of transferring, donating, or selling supplies, equipment, and, and or real property that you no longer need that was purchased with federal funds. Um, supplies or any tangible property that don't fall under the definition of equipment. Equipment is any tangible property that has a useful life of one year or more, and it also has a per unit cost that equals or exceeds $5,000. And then real property is land, including improvements, but it excludes movable machinery and equipment. Um, for disposing of these, um, if the residual inventory of your unused supplies is less than $5,000 in total aggregate value, then the supplies may be used if they are needed, whether or not the project continues to be supported by the federal award for activities under another U.S. Department of Education federal award or for activities under a federal award from other federal awarding agencies. And the same goes for equipment, which is any tangible property may be used, again, if they're needed, whether or not the project continues for activities under another Department of Education federal award or for activities under a federal award from another federal agency. And then real property can be used for the authorized purpose of the project as long as it is needed or obtain written approval by the federal awarding agency for the use in other federally sponsored projects. So now we're going to go with um, federal physical hours, office hours, um, give you some information on this. And you can please, if you could share this with your business managers, anybody who really should get this. Um, the federal programs offices, Office of Federal Emergency Relief, um, ESSER, Elementary and Secondary Education Act, ESEAs, Office of Special Services and Inclusive Education, IDEA, Career and Technical Education, Perkins. Medberg um, from Bangor and this other person who asked a good question. You guys are the only ones who shoot, showed up? Yeah. Shoot up. Oh, hi. We can hear you. <laughs> My apologies. That's okay. I wasn't sure. I, I don't know if you're asking us a question, but okay. Go ahead, Dee Dee. Okay. So, um, and then Office of Child Nutrition, they host an office hour on the first, the fourth Thursday of every month to focus on physical matters like invoicing, time and effort, policies, procedures, and or maintenance of effort. Um, here is the link that we put in available for that. Um, and that's available on the, like I say, fourth Thursday of every month. And here are some resources that um, everybody has had access to. And if you, if there's any questions on there, if there's nothing on there, you can always reach out to any of us um, if you have any questions. And you can also find us online. And here is the, um, 